This is Scott the Fixing Guy fixing a LG washing machine that won't drain. This is a very common problem. We're just going to put in a new drain motor. So to do this, we got it unplugged, and we're going to remove this clamp that holds on the door bellows, and we're going to pull that rubber seal away from the front panel because we're going to be removing the front panel. Next thing we pull off this little plastic cover and we're going to remove this Phillips head screw that's in front of the drain. Pull that out. We're going to grab this plastic cover and pull it toward us. There's a little Phillips head screw here at the very bottom. We want to remove that too. We're going to spray some Windex in front of the rubber feet of the washing machine to help break the friction on the floor. And then we'll reach inside with the door open and pull a little bit on the right, a little bit on the left to break the inertia. So we want to pull the machine toward us enough so we can get somewhat behind the machine to undo a couple of screws. So in this case, I'm just getting it maybe a foot or two out of the cabinet. And then I'll use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove two Phillips head screws on the back right and back left hand corner. And that'll let me remove the upper panel. Once I get those screws off, I'll push the panel back by about an inch and then lift it off. So just pulled out the detergent drawer. And then I'm gonna remove a couple of Phillips head screws that hold on the control panel, one in the upper right hand corner in the back, a little tiny screw, and then two about one inch screws on the left side of the panel that are uh, right behind the detergent drawer. These are longer and also stainless steel screws, so I want to kind of keep track of those, make sure those are the ones that go in when you put it back together. So the owner of this one said that it had actually failed only at the two-year mark, which is pretty early, but it seems like around five years these pumps fail and the impeller kind of breaks loose of the shaft and you just have to put on a new one. They only cost about maybe 25 bucks from Amazon. So I'm pulling off the control panel and then I can remove this set of, I think it's... Uh, five screws here, five or six screws that are holding on the top of the front panel. These are just Phillips head screws. And then there's a couple screws also for the door lock that we have to remove. These are Phillips head screws and they're um, a little bit different type also, so you want to keep track of these two. I'm going to put these off to the right so I remember it goes from the right side of the machine. And we're making sure that the boot seal is removed from the front of the front panel and there's just a few more screws we'll remove here at the top left hand side and then we can just pull the front panel toward us at about 45 degrees and then we can lift it off of the two bottom clips mm -hmm. that are holding it on at the bottom. I'm just coming back about 45 degrees and then I'll lift it off those two bottom clips. So now we can start removing the pump. I'm going to remove these two power leads that go to the circulation pump that's on the right side of the assembly. I'm going to open up this tube and let any, any water that's left in the machine drain out. So that could be a lot of water if the tub was completely full. So it may take a few cycles here to get all that water out.
There we go. Looks like we got it all. And when you remove the coin trap, you shouldn't get any more water coming out. The coin trap looks good too. There's nothing caught in there. pliers to press in on these hose clamps and lift the, these two tubes off of the circulation pump. I'm going to kind of keep track of which one's which. There's one marked with red and one marked with blue and the red one goes uh, towards you, toward the front, and the blue one goes in the back. So we got those two off. We're going to now remove this green hose, which is the drain hose that takes the water away from the machine. And then there's a big uh, black hose behind the drain that's bringing water from the tub to the drain. And that's a, a bigger one with a bigger hose clamp. Mm -hmm. You can even maybe use your fingers to pull that one off. So now we're going to use a 10 millimeter ratchet to remove three screws that are holding the pump assembly down. There's two in the front and then there's one behind the pump and they're all three 10 millimeter. I'm using this angle tool that makes it a little bit easier. So I get that one in the back. So we've removed four hoses and we've removed two power connectors so far and three 10 millimeter bolts. We're almost totally disconnected. There's two more power leads that go to the drain pump here on the left hand side. So we're going to pull the drain pump away a little bit to have better access. We're going to wiggle those two off and then we're completely disconnected. Mm. Mm. So we want to get the whole pump assembly over toward the right side of the machine because there's an easier way to get that thing out. There's more room. Pull it out and then we're going to be removing and replacing the pump that's on the left hand side. One on the right hand side is the circulation pump but we want to remove the drain pump. So I'm just giving where I have a little more light I can see what I'm doing and we have the new part again i think it was 22 dollars from amazon here's the part number on the box and to do that we have to remove three phillips head screws that are holding the pump to the pump housing in the next picture it'll show you where those screws are there's three of them and just kind of take your time and remember where they go on the new pump and then push that against, uh, the, put the new motor against the new pump and get those screws, all three screws down there really tight. Once you have them tight, you can reinstall the drain pump. And we're just putting the front cover now back on. So I got it on the bottom clips. And I'm gonna push it up against the machine and then I'll add those uh, screws at the top that hold it on. So these screws that are at the top are kind of interesting because they're um, Phillips head, but also they have a hex design. So you could use also a wrench to tighten them. So once we get all those in, we'll go ahead and put the control panel back into position and we'll put the screws on the back. 
put the detergent drawer back in. We'll put the top back on and we can slide it toward us to lock it in. Put the two screws on the back of the top that hold it on in the, in the back right and back left hand side. And then we'll put the rubber gasket back onto the front panel. We'll put the spring clip around that to hold it on. And then we'll put the screws back into the lower left hand corner that hold the pump cover on. And we're pretty much done. So we're just pushing the front panel back on. putting those longer screws in that hold on <clears throat> the panel behind the detergent drawer. They're stainless steel, probably about one inch long. Make sure that sits down nice and flat. And then we'll just put all the other pieces back and we are done. So I hope this has been helpful to you and please subscribe to our channel when you get a chance. Thanks for watching.